Hello, my name is Rick Porter. In the last video, Unity in Christ Morning, that's what we titled it, Morning. What I was really talking about is that we have no fear of God in our eyes. We absolutely don't in the Western church. And in this church in America, there's very few people who actually fear God. And you know what? It's terrible, like the writer Hebrew says, it would be terrible, terrified to fall into the hands, into the arms of an angry God. And is God angry with his church right now? Is our Lord Jesus happy with the way things are going in the church now? Are we hungering and crying out for him? Are we mourning for the world? Are we coming together in unity? Do we love the Lord God with all our hearts, with all our minds, and all our souls? And if we did love the Lord God, where are we? The meek shall inherit the earth. Where are we? If we did love the Lord God with all our hearts, with all our minds, and our soul, why are we allowing evil to run rampant? The thing is, again, we have absolutely no fear of God. And I'm going to read something real quick. 1 John 4.18 there is no fear in love. There's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. At the same time, if you're not walking in love, in the love of God, if you're not full of the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit has not manifested himself in you, convict you of your sins, so you can be in the righteousness of Christ, which is a gift. It's a free gift. Again, if you cannot stand upright away from the sins that wants to turn us away from God, you better have some fear. But when you're walking in the love of God, when you're walking in the fruit of spirit, love, joy, peace, which is all comes from God, faithfulness, meekness. Yes, all this comes from God. It's a gift from God. But we have to receive it. We have to receive it by turning the world off and Hungering for God. Hungering for God. Not just reading your Bibles. Reading your Bibles is important because it is the Word of God. But have a hunger. A mourning for God. If you're not mourning for this world, there's something not quite right. If you can just go to church and build your faith on other people and not on the promises of God, who is faith. The fruit of spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. It all comes from him. The purity of the spirit, the purity of God's word wants to manifest in us. But the problem is, we just have no fear of God to want to mourn and hunger more for him. We, go, we became a church of rituals. And we have to have a fear of God. We do, until you're walking in love, until his love is manifested in you. You better fear God. And it just blows me away that we came with a church that has absolutely no fear of God in our eyes. There's all kinds of sins in the church, and I testified this in all the videos. And, uh, and I want to talk to you. There's no fear, you know, of God who's has this uh, whole world coming underneath one government. Now, I'm talking about fearing God. I'm not talking about fear in this world. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but power, power, love, and a sound mind. So when we keep our eyes on God and we're walking in the love of God, we will take back this land. Because again, we just receive, and it's his faithfulness, it's the obedience of Jesus Christ on the cross, it's his faithfulness that lives within us. But we have to hunger for these things, and we have to be obedient to these things. You know, our faith is about obedience. The grace of God working in our life is about being obedient, willingly to do his will. And his will, he says it in Beatitudes, the meek shall inherit the earth. It, this whole Bible, it's always about being obedient to the Lord and taking possession of the land, turning away from idols, and making God first, putting his will first, making 
And now, being a Christian, we make Jesus Christ preeminent in our lives. That's what we do. And I have to tell you, the Lord put in my heart that this globalization is just not from him. Listen to this. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar that they dwelled there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven. And listen to this. Listen very closely. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth, and they left off to build the city. And um, so the Lord came down. The Lord scattered people. It was the Lord. The Lord, so he can work, so he can work through a people. So he can magnify it himself in a people so the whole world when evil comes from from the spirit of cain you know who uh, killed abel and from the fall of our first father which is adam and when sin came into the world when man got to learn of good and evil and because of the flesh chose evil there was always supposed to be a people who are going to turn their lives over to the Lord, who are going to hunger for God, who are going to hunger for His righteousness, His holiness, and His grace, so the fruit of the land shall be plentiful. And, uh, and again, now being a Christian who made Jesus Christ preeminent in my life, I receive faithfulness even from him. It's his faithfulness that that drives me, that makes me be one with him and love him and love people and mourn for people and have joy with people, cry with people and laugh with people because I see the world through the eyes of God and I know he wants people saved. I know he wants his church to be glorified. I know that our Lord Jesus Christ died for the sins and sins of the whole world. And I know these things. I know for everyone who believes in him and follows after him and does righteousness through his righteousness, we just have to be obedient. We just have to hear from him and go. You know, we as a church should be walking down the street. Two of us should be walking down the street. And with such fellowship, knowing that Christ is in the midst of us. For Jesus himself said, with two or more gather my name, there I will be in the midst of them. And we should be able to just look and say, come follow me. And just like Jesus, who Peter and John never knew, dropped everything they had, and they followed after Jesus. Because of the glory of our Heavenly Father that was in him. They saw that. But see, this unity took the glory of of our Father out of us. And it's time to unify. And we do that through faithfulness. And I'm going to tell you how important faithfulness is and why we should have a fear of God if we're not walking in the love of God. But again, with His perfection in us, it will cast out fear. And this is Deuteronomy chapter 28. And it shall come to pass, 
if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations on earth. There you go. High above all nations. It's not talking about a global world. High above all nations. And all these blessings shall come unto thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And I'm going to go down to 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses. And in thou shalt set thy hand and bless all that you put your hand to do. And you shall bless thee in the land. And he, the Lord, shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. All the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plentiful in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of the cattle, and the fruit of the ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto the fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in the season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. We should, we should not. Being a Christian nation, there's no way we should be $30 trillion in debt. It says it right here. But, he says, if you keep my commandments. But yet, the philosophy in the church today is, he got rid of the commandments. Because we're saved by grace. Which is true. It's only by grace we're saved. Not by works, but by grace. But yet, we have to be obedient to do the will of the Lord, to keep his commandments. And how do we keep his commandments? Well, he gave us the power to do it. He empowered us by grace through his Holy Spirit to keep his commandments and walk in his ways. We can walk just like Jesus did. But we deny that. Jesus said, be ye perfect, for your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, well I can't be perfect. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a human. That's doubt and disbelief right there. That is not of God. We can walk in his perfection. We can be sanctified in Christ Jesus. We can make Jesus Christ preeminent in his life. You know that Jesus came through the Virgin Mary, that the seed, his seed, the father's seed, was planted into a virgin. You know why? Because now we find, I'll tell you why. Because Jesus was born perfect. He wasn't born into this curse. See, our seed is curse. You know, so when we put a seed into a woman, that seed is already curse. But Christ already re redeemed us from the curse of law. But we have to see these things. And when the seed, the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit was planted into Mary without a man, you know, the Virgin Mary. You know that science found out that there's no blood that gets mixed from the mother. Blood can come from the baby, but no blood from the mother can go into the baby. So that's why Jesus was so pure. It was all about his blood. The blood that he spilled to make us pure and holy and righteous. That's the blood. That blood never mixed with Mary. If it did, he would have been born in this curse too. Which is why sometimes, because this earth is cursed, you know, and Satan is the god of this world, and he wants to kill, steal, and destroy, why some kids can be born with cancers and and all kind of stuff. But Jesus was perfect because the seed the Father put in Mary never mixed with tainted blood. But his blood is righteousness. We just have to receive this gift of righteousness and walk into faithfulness. And this is what happens when you don't keep his commandments. And his commandments are not very grievous. We should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and love our neighbors out of ourselves. We love God, and we will not hurt anyone 
if we truly, truly love God. We will keep his commandments. They'd be written in our hearts where thou shalt not lie. And we, we wouldn't lie because there'd be a conviction. Oh, man. And if you did lie, like I said in another video, I had to drive 30 miles one way because the Holy Spirit beat me up and said, oh, I had to go 30 miles one way, tell somebody at work, hey, I lied to you. Drive 30 back. So that was a 120-mile day that just going back and forth to work because I lied to somebody. But it was the Holy Spirit convicting me that, hey, why? Because his commandment is written in my heart. I shall not lie. So don't, this teaching, well, the commandments are gone. It's why there's no conviction in the church today. The commandments are there. And we should know them. They should be written in our hearts. You know, now we don't fulfill them. We allow the Holy Spirit to fulfill them. But we have to be obedient when the Spirit says, hey, you got to go uh, apologize to that guy for lying. You know, and you have to confess to him that you lied or whatever it is. You know, when you do, when the Holy Spirit can beat you up, you got to be obedient and confess. That is true repentance. And you will be delivered. You will be delivered. And, um, well, I wanted to give some testimony, but uh, th that would have been a perfect time to give testimony. But I want to get back to uh, if we do not keep God's commandments. We shall, I mean, you, I just read some of the blessings that if we do keep his commandments and walk with the Lord. And that means to make him preeminent. But if we do not keep his commandments and walk with the Lord, the Lord shall make thy pestilence cleave unto thee until he has consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with inflammation and with extreme burden, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until they perish, until you perish. I'm going to go to 35 now. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees, and in the legs, and a sore botch that cannot be healed, from the sole of thy foot to the top of thy head. I'm going to go to, uh, well, I'm going to go back up here to 27. I missed this. I want to read this. The Lord shall smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds. That word emeralds is tumors. And with the scab and with the itch, wherefore thou cannot be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart, which we're seeing in the world today. We're all being astonished at what's going on in this world. You know. I'm not because I'm walking in the Lord, uh, the joy of the Lord, but I see the fear in everyone. I see the fear in the church, which is ridiculous. It should not be in the church. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to 47. This is Deuteronomy chapter, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of things. See, our land was blessed and we didn't serve him with join us for all the abundance of things. We did not keep on hungering for more of him when this land was so abundant, when we were the givers, when we were lending to the world, when we were a superpower, when we were a Christian nation, we stopped hungering. And that's why in the last video I said the Reformation should not have stopped with the printings of the Bible. It should have just been in the beginning. We should have stayed hungry for God. But it's not... Too late to turn around and hunger for God now and, and cry out and mourn and come together in unity. But we need pastors who are going to believe in everything that's written in, in the Bible. Because this is the only thing that can uni unify us if we believe in all the promises of God. And uh, But we don't. We pick and choose what we want to believe, and that's why we have so many different denominations. But the Lord told me a while back, said, I'm going to use you to call people across denominational lines, state lines, and country lines, you know, and that's what I'm doing, you know, unity, the name of the series, unity in Christ, and when we start believing in our promises, and stop making excuses, and stop saying stuff like, well, there's no more uh, commandments, you know, they're, they're gone because of grace, where we just abuse grace, um, we'll never be unified, and, um, 48, 
Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, enemies, enemies uh, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck un until he has destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far and from the ends of the earth. And this is what's happening now. We're falling apart. We're not the superpower we once were. We, uh, we're going to a, a one world global economy. And none of this is from God. And the church sent back in silence. Why? A, we have no fear. B, we're divided. You know, we don't stand on the promises of God. We even had division of what his word says. We take the simple things. We, we can preach a hundred different ways on salvation and, and all kind of other ways. But to say, hey, you know, this is what Jesus Christ promised. You know, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all of me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgive us of all our iniquities, who heals us of all the diseases, who redeemed our life from destruction, crowned thee with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy our mouth with good things, so our youth is renewed like the eagles. That's Psalms 103, 1 through 5. A promise. A promise. He would heal. We are healed of all our diseases. That's a promise. You know, in Proverbs, my son, attend to my words, incline my ears to the saying, let them not depart from their eyes, keep them in the midst of their heart, for their life of those who find them, and health through all their flesh. Health through all their flesh. Well, there's no flesh in heaven. These belong to us. Here, promises. But right there is the vision. And again, I said it in the last video, I'm going to say it again. Anytime we deny the power of God in one aspect, we deny him in every, in every aspect. We really do. You know, people can say, well, you know, no, no, I love God. Oh, I show God I love. I do. I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord. I, I love God. Well, if you love him so much, you know, you would keep, you would be faithful to his promises. And you allow his promises to manifest in you. You will believe in his word. How can you say you love him but not believe in his word? Or pick and choose what you want to believe in. That's unfaithfulness. His, he is so faithful to us. And the way we show we're faithful to him is just believing in his word. You know, at least saying, hey, I believe in your word. I believe in it, Lord. I believe it's going to manifest. I believe in it. That would unify us. But if part of the church says, well, he didn't really mean that. And other per part of the church says he did. Well, right there, it's division. And again, Jesus said, no kingdom divided against the social stand. But even Jesus and all the gospels except for John, the, th the three gospels talk about this. That Jesus could not do, Jesus Christ, our Lord, could not do great signs and wonders in his hometown. Except for he healed a couple of sick folks, but that's just like me going to church and and casting a, a fever out of somebody, which I have done, or or just going to church and laying hands on somebody and their headache goes away, which the Lord has used me to have to do. It's all about Him. It's not my holiness of power, like like uh, Peter and John said, but faith, faith in the name of Jesus that healed these people. But yet. There's no major miracles in the church today. Why? Because of doubt disbelief. Because we're in the kingdom of God. We're his hometown. And Jesus marveled. You can read it in your Bible. I don't know where it is right now, but you can read it in yourself in, the Bible, in your Bibles. Jesus marveled at their doubt and disbelief and could not. And I read in many different versions. They all said the same thing and could not do any major works. Could not do any major signs. Because of their doubt and disbelief. Well, look what's happening in the church today. Because you have pastors who just haven't surrendered their lives to the Lord. They have their own platforms. Or they might have started off real good, but they get puffed up. And then they always worry about, you know, preparing the great next great sermon. Instead of just allowing the Holy Spirit to bring us together. And stop denying the power 
that's in his written word. I just quoted two scriptures that talk about health on earth. And um, again, his word is true. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. He is the way, the only way to heaven, but we need his truth to make it to heaven, and we need the life, his life through the Holy Spirit to make it, to really pick us up and bring us to the place, to the promised land. We need it all. We need all three. We cannot say that I love the Lord, but yet deny his truth. And his word is truth. Everything in there. Every promise we have to believe. Or you better have some fear because the Lord is pulling his hands off this country. He's shaking this country up. And the whole world, again, is waiting for us to rise up and take back this country from the evil that's running it and take back this world because there's, it should not be one global economy. They're using technology to control every aspect of our life and they're breaking the will of man purposely, setting up Satan's kingdom why church does nothing. Oh, it's a prophecy. It's a prophecy. It's going to happen anyhow. When did God say not to stand up for righteousness' sake? When did he ever say not to fight against evil? When did he not warn us that our silence, that our silence is to, is to submit to the evil? And, uh, well... Until next week, I'm Rick Porter. I love you all. And, and it's time, Father, it's time for your church to shine. It's time for us to unify in Christ Jesus. It's time for us to believe in all the promises. All the promises. It's time to see ourselves made righteous in Christ. It's time to see ourselves in heavenly places, sanctified away from this cursed earth with pestilence and dark darkness does not consume us does not even touch us because you are the light of the world and we are in you so we are the light of the world and Jesus is calling us to be that light his body and so Father I thank you that you send your son to die for us and Father I ask you to glorify yourself in your son in his body in his church in Jesus name Amen. Globalization is not from God. I'll tell you what it is from God. It's who we are, our identity in Christ, that we are made righteous. And next week, I'm going to have a dear brother of mine, Keith Murphy, come join us. And, well, he wrote a book about who we are in Christ, our identity. So I wanted to share a little bit about uh, his book and just, just come on and talk about who we are in Christ Jesus.